What's going on, internets? How are we doing? So I did this video once. My story. SD card messed up. So I'm not there to do it again. Kind of set, kind of annoyed, you know. I uh, it's, it's, it's kind of, I don't know, I guess it's a, uh, kind of a cash one too, or, uh, you know, thing. It would have been good for you guys, and you guys would have seen me get a little emotional and teared up. Talking about my Bible study teacher, kind of in a way, kind of glad that I don't have to. Hopefully, I don't go through the same thing this time, and you know, you don't get to see me all, you know, emotional and stuff. It's kind of embarrassing, I guess, but I shouldn't be. But you know, self-conscious as I am, so I'm glad that you know, kind of, you know, kind of glad that. But then again, it would have been good. It would have been like you know. A genuine thing for you guys to see. So, my story, how I became a JW, you know, what led up to, <clears throat> you know, my experience in it, the problems I had in it, what I did while I was in it. So I guess it starts out before I was born, back like 1974, my dad gets a knock on the door and some JWs peddling in 1975 and I don't think that I'm not sure if they actually were talking about 1975 or it was the book I believe they were given, they were given out and they talked about 1975 I think that's when my dad first started studying in if I remember correctly and um, my dad he tells the story like he was 17 that up to that time he had had this, this like when I was a kid, it, it was like, okay, yeah, makes sense. Now I'm 40 years old, or almost 40. I look back what I knew when I was 17, how long it took me to understand what I understand now. And it just, it, it makes me laugh. You know, so at 17, he had done this extensive search of religion and Christianity and Eastern religions. and you know, was almost an atheist because it, you know, didn't make sense. And then witnesses came up and he's like, okay, I'll, 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 I'll mess with them. I'll, I'll get them. I'll ask them questions they can't answer. And ask them questions. And they had answers and they were using the Bible. And he's like, oh, so I started studying with them at age 17. And I guess sometime between then and shortly after 1975 that study stopped because that his particular Bible study teacher left during 1975 that first one and I don't know exactly between there and when I was born he was somewhat active in it obviously because he got my mom pregnant had me and then he got married in the Kingdom Hall in 1980 so he had to be doing something with them back then but for the most part, his studies were hit and miss on and off for about 20 years after that. My first, I, mean, I knew, I grew up, I knew we were witness, Jehovah's Witnesses. I didn't really know what that meant. All I knew what it meant was we didn't celebrate the holidays. And in the future, there's going to be a paradise earth where I was going to play with lions. That's what I believe that's that that was my general understanding of Jehovah's Witness told about six and then he started studying with this guy again another guy an elder getting kind of uh, I mean regular enough he studied through the Live Forever book and we not even worship book kind of started regularly going to Sunday meetings book study and a couple of field service I think um, at that time he was what they called, he became what they called an approved associate. I guess that's that was back then, that was a step before publisher. You become approved associate. And so he, he made it to that point. And then um, probably around the time he divorced my mom and that all went down, I think, is when he stopped studying again. And Shortly after he divorced my mom, he got married again. And my stepmom, she was from Mexico, didn't speak any English. And he got her studying 
And I'm not sure if he was studying at the same time. I think she was just studying. He wasn't for a while. And then she is pregnant, has my brother, almost bleeds out, and he somehow convinces her to not do a blood transfusion, almost dies. Thank God she didn't. And then after that, a little while after that, I think it's like around 91, I'm guessing, he started to study again. With some other brothers, I remember that from the Kingdom Home and I had got and we had gone years earlier, a couple years earlier, when we were kind of regular. <clears throat> they started studying with them, and then we started kind of going to the meetings a little bit. I think up until then, we usually get to the memorial. Once a year, we get to the memorial. There's a couple years we missed the memorial, but we used to always at least get to the memorial. And then once you start that study, kind of getting back in, so they were both studying. My mom was studying with the Spanish congregation. My dad with the English. This is in LA, Monterey Park. And uh, then we moved to Richmond, Virginia in the end of 92. And that's when we got serious, or he got serious. We became like more regular. You know, we were, it was actually, there was no going back, there was no stopping the studying and then going back to just not studying and not doing anything. It was, uh, it was that, that was basically, he made his, I guess he made his city with this new, you know, start anew. And uh, so I was about 12 years old when I started going to meetings regularly. And of course, for whatever reason, he didn't prep us. I remember for like the first long time, it was like months, if not even a year, I went to the meeting in hiking boots because I bought some hiking boots for school. And instead of taking me out and get dress shoes, I was just wearing hiking boots with dress pants and a, I used to always get comments on, oh, 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 look at your hiking boots. And I didn't really get a suit or anything, you know, for like a year. I guess my dad wasn't sure he really wanted to invest in meeting clothes and book bags if he wasn't uh, positive he was gonna stay, with, stick with it, I guess, I don't know. But, so I started going. And then, you know, and then at that point, I, this is when I realized there was a service meeting in Tia Crab Ministry School. I didn't realize that until I was like, well, what's this? There's another meeting. It's not the book study. And so, you know, and, and I started studying. I was like, eh, you know, started really getting the JW, you know, what, what they were all about, what meetings were really, really all about, what, you know, the procedures and things. And really wasn't liking it. It was just, I, I just seen, it just, that's when it started. It was just something that told me this, this is wrong. There's something wrong with this whole thing. I couldn't pinpoint it. You know, I was 12 years old, but just, you know, I, I figured, oh, I'm just dumb. I'm just a kid. So then I started studying about age 14, eighth grade, with a sister in a congregation. Now, the average person, I think I said in another video, the average person, they're studying, you know, if they're studying with the, you know, regular JW or Pioneer, you know, that's a high school teacher, you know. And the other, you might be a higher up high school teacher, you know, AP, college prep type high school teacher. My study teacher was equivalent to like a Harvard professor. And the study regimen, the teaching regimen she put me through for like two and a half years, I think. About two years. Though basically the entire, you know, the Forever on Paradise Earth book. And it, you know, so basically, we started studying, and our studies consisted of my my so my lesson had to be read underline notes in the margins if that wasn't done you know all scriptures looked up if that wasn't done then she sit there while I did it you know 20 30 minutes while I did that and then she would commence with our two hour long study and our study wasn't read the paragraph read a scripture answer the question it was 
went through all the scriptures talking, just talking about the subject of the paragraph, which is all the scriptures. And it was just basically like a talk. She was just go to use the thing as outline, just be like teaching, blah, 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 talking, you know, look the scripture, what does this mean? What does this mean? This and that. And she would go through all that, the entire lesson, about an hour and a half. Then we go back to the start. Then we read the script, we read the paragraph, read, look up the scripture again, answer the question. And there was always, you know, stuff she would bring up. And, you know, she was a missionary in Gilead. She went to Gilead, um, in Bolivia, she went to Gilead. She conducted the watchtower studies and the um, book studies. One, she, she talked about, you know, we we're going through a revelation book at one point. She's like, you know, it's hard. She's like, this is nothing. You didn't go through Babylon the Great. I had to study, I had to conduct a study out of that. The Battle on the Great Book, this big old thick book like that big. With no like colorful pictures to keep your mind off the monotonous, confusing writing. So study with her like that. And then summer comes. She, you know, she's like, Oh, how what are you planning for summer? I said, Oh, you know, just do whatever. She's like, Well, Wednesday I'm gonna come pick you up and we're gonna go out and fill service. And I hadn't really been out. I'd gone out a couple times on Saturdays. Um, I think I had, by that time, I'd only done one door. And I was just basically the guy that just sat there because I wasn't a publisher. I actually never became a publisher. I was, I guess, in a way, grandfathered in. I just started turning in my time. She told me, just turn in your time. Don't worry about being a publisher. Just turn in your time. If they, they'll, they'll come to you, they'll ask you. So I was like, I'm not a publisher yet. She's like, just start turning your time in. And so I never went, went and asked him to become a publisher and they accepted my time and I never had to get become a publisher before I got baptized. That came up. They're like, you're not even a publisher. I've been doing it, you know, it was five years and I bet you're not even a publisher. And they're like, should we go with the publisher questions? They're like, no, I'll just go with the baptism questions. So I never became a publisher. But so I was going, so she take us out or take me out and my sister and we go and uh, that first fill service, we did one street, which she did, you know, her thing. We get to the next street, she's like, okay, this house is yours. Go ahead, do it. I said, oh, well, and I just had my Bible. It's like, well, where's your, because uh, at this time, you know, again, we're about two years in, I still don't have, have, have a meeting bag or a fill service bag. And uh, she's like, well, where's your meal? I said, like, oh, I don't have one, I just have my Bible. She's like, well, here you go. She gave me the watchtower. She's like, this is what we're doing. You've been watching me. Have at it. And so I did, till about one o'clock, I did every other house the rest of the day. That's how she uh, broke me into the fill service. Every house. Now, most of the time, it was me doing the doors when we were out in the fill service. I did the majority of them. She would do them too. And I worked with her, you know. And this would be, you know, not only were we preaching, but she was teaching as well. She was teaching me, all the, you know, whatever it was, it was talking about the article that we were presenting or something else or something at the meeting. That was our conversation usually. You know, so I spent time with this woman teaching me. And she would bring things out. And I had... Not only her, but then her mother, who served as a missionary with her. She didn't go to Gilly, but she served as a missionary with her in Bolivia, was just as knowledgeable. You know, and, and, and again, these ladies were in, were in it since like the 50s. So I'd have her if I wasn't working with her. If I worked with the one, my, my boss or the other, or her mom, we'd be in the car group together with them. Both of them, the knowledge that they were just, just coming at me. And so, continue to study. The next summer, it was two days. Oh, so first day, we fill service. She makes me do all the doors the rest of the day. I think we do that again another day. Third day, we're doing doors, and it was an apartment complex, and it was hot. And she's like, okay, we got to get this done we quick. Go across, do all them by yourself. 
And so very quickly learned to do doors by myself. Sometimes she would just use your Bible, just use your Bible, just talk to them about the Bible. Have your scriptures in your mind, because she talked about when she was growing up, they had sermons. They'd have a sermon with three scriptures. That's how they were supposed to. And so she taught me that, just to go up and to use the Bible. And then, if they showed interest, give them a track. It doesn't matter whatever track. Just just pull in your, just give them a track, because it's information. But, you know, sometimes it would go with what you were talking about, sometimes not. But the whole the point was just using the Bible, teaching the Bible to the people at the door. And then, you know, after that long, you know, 12, 1 o'clock, we go have lunch and then proceed with our two hour long study. And this time it was at her, usually at her apartment, so she had her bound volume set. So she, if she was going, she'd be like, oh, let me go look at the index. Okay, let me just stand and start, you know. Here you go. So she was, it was a very, you know, intense study. Went on for like two and a half, almost two and a half years. And then we ended up, you know, once we finished the Live Forever book, well, and I was also in. Not only was I working out with her on Wednesday field service, it was Saturday field service too. Because she was in our book study. So I was almost always with her on Saturday field service. So three days a week at one point. And a Bible study. With this Gilead missionary learning the witness doctrine and all that. Now at the time I wasn't really into it. It was not my... It's not what I wanted to do. I, I, I had no... It was, it was, I did not foresee myself ever getting baptized. I was just planning on just doing what I did until I got 18 and, did, and then lived my life how I wanted to. I didn't want to be a witness that back then. So I didn't get as much as I probably could have out of the study. Cause, but I still got a lot, a whole bunch. You know, Instead of making an A in my study, I got like a C probably, you know. Anyway, so we finish our study, knowledge book comes out, and well, the knowledge book would come out like a year, like a little later, or a little earlier, we still hadn't finished the Live Forever book, she didn't, I was in there asking, I was like, well, are we going to start with this? She's like, no. She's like, that book's basic. We need this book. We're going we're gonna to finish out this book. The Live Forever book. So we finished the Live Forever book. And then because it was no longer required, required to do go through the United in Worship book, she said that she basically put it on my dad. It's like, if you want to go through the United in Worship book, you do it. It's your responsibility. Which he didn't do. Which I'm glad because... That was the last person I needed to study the Bible with. He, he just had a way of just making you feel stupid. I was just, you know, he was the, he knew it. And, and I, like the few times we did a Bible study when he tried and do the, I was just talking with my sister about this the other day. She'd bring it up too. She's like, I just remember doing the, 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 the daily scriptures and him just using it as a way to just make us feel stupid. You know, so I was so glad when he didn't go through the United Worship book with us. And then that, you know, but I still worked with her a lot in filters. I still went, I, I st we, she would still, every summer, take me out every day, you know, a couple of days, a couple of days a week during the summer. So I still got that training with her for another, you know, how many years? Again, long days in field service with this woman, doing return visits, going on Bible studies. And then, you know, go, and then by the time I was about 17 is when I started, I guess, getting serious or get like more considering it more seriously, what I was going to do with this whole religion. 
And, you know, I guess, you know, your high school, you're looking at, you're graduating. What am I going to do next? And so once I graduated, I was like, got to make a decision. Am I going to take this seriously or I'm going to do what I had always thought I was doing? You know, 18, graduated, move out. And so I decided I would, I didn't want to go the move out route, you know. Because by then, I guess, you know, I had been indoctrinated enough to where I believed it. And I genuinely wanted to do the right thing. So I became a witness, got baptized in 98 at that convention. And then about a month after I got baptized, became an auxiliary pioneer, then became a regular pioneer. And would spend, you know, just be, you know, spend my, you know, new free days preaching, you know, almost every day, working my part time job at Wendy's and U Crops. And that's what I did for about a year and a half, and then eventually needed to get a job, I guess a real job, because I knew Wendy's and Working at a grocery store wasn't going to pay the bills. Wasn't going to allow me to do things I needed to do. So I, I knew I needed to... And I had taken plumbing in high school. So I was like, well, I just got to get... I got to, you know... I put that off for two years. I got to get that going. You know. So I got into the construction. got into the plumbing. Still regular and field service. Almost every Sunday... I'd be in full service every Saturday. I'd be in full service just about. If I was off, I was in full service on every day that we were. I was off. Or you know, one time if I got laid off or something, that two or three weeks between jobs would be every day just about in full service. And then, so, but if I got back in the plumbing right before we moved to Ohio, moved to Ohio. And then, so moved to Ohio, and I guess that's where I got more ser- even more serious. Not I wasn't was pioneering anymore, but since I wasn't pioneering, you know, I would do the uh, you know trying reaching out thing. So moved to Ohio, and met some you know there's some good people there. Different, totally different culture. The, the hall I was in in Virginia was kind of a more conservative, kind of, you know, kind of a boring hall. You know, they, they just wasn't, there wasn't much going on outside the meetings. It was, it was you know, rare for get togethers and stuff. When we were in Columbus, and these, you know, I remember the first thing I thought was crazy was after a Thursday night meeting, anybody from Columbus remember them back in the days? After Thursday night meeting, we go to Applebee's. Not just our congregation, but like every other congregation that had a meeting on Saturday night. We'd all meet up at Applebee's for like two hours. I thought that was weird. You had square dances. Now every all the Columbus people would uh, go to every other week in the winter. And there was a tragedy with that all that. Remember, some friends of mine ended up dying, racing coming back from that square dance. But, um, so I, I, I really, that's, I guess, where I started really reaching out for privileges, because, if you know, I'm not going to serve, serve fill service, but I still was always going to fill service whenever I could. Making my meetings, I remember my dad one time, because one problem I, I, one thing I didn't really get into as a witness was study. Because it's just, I guess one thing, the Watchtower is just so mind-numbing when I read them. I mean, I, I could read any other book and be fine just about start reading the Watchtower and my, my, my brain would just literally go to sleep. I'd, I'd, I'd be, I feel like I need to go to sleep. And I just learned better anyway listening than actually reading. I guess that's one reason why my study with my uh, Bible, the, the sister I studied the Bible with went so well because it was more her explaining, you know, talking and explaining. That is how I learned personally. 
And so I, I just need to really listen to the meet at the meetings and get just about everything I need to get. And I remember my dad used to ask, and I hated this stupid question. What did you learn at the meeting today when I was a kid? And I was just like, I don't know. I didn't really learn anything because they just talk about the same shit. But I couldn't say that. So I had to sit there and think about something I could have. I could, I could, and I just, it, oh, it drive me nuts. What did you learn at the meeting today? I don't know. They talk about the same bullshit they talk about every other day. But <laughs> so I didn't really study much. But everything else, I tried. And, and so since I didn't study that much, you really saw my watchtower underlined. You have to underline so you you know underline so everybody could see you study your watchtower. I, I always thought that was hilarious. I always thought it was funny when the brother was like, yeah, you know, we make sure, you know, we, 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 I remember the brother was like, we, we, we've been noticing you studying your watchtower. So I did that. And then also I got involved in quick builds, Virginia, mainly in Virginia, did a couple in Columbus, Ohio area, got, you know, involved in the quick builds. Um, so the more territories I did too. Went to Kentucky one year, Georgia the next. And, and worked, worked a little bit. I got baptized right at the end of the building at the Richmond Assembly Hall. So I was able to get a couple, I think it was like 30, was it 30 days I had to wait? I think it was, it was, just, I think it was 30 days I had to wait for it to work on because I wanted to go work on the Assembly Hall. I think they're like, oh, you, you gotta wait 30 days or something. To make sure the baptism catches, I guess. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I didn't have to wait. I just remember there was something like, I was like, I'm baptized. I want to go. Oh, no, you got to wait just a little while. But, um, so, yeah, did, you know, involved in the quick builds. Anytime there's anything need to be done at the Kingdom Hall, I was there doing it, hoping out, you know. Since I was a little more mechanical, I would help, you know, another brother with uh, maintenance things, <clears throat> putting light pole, poles in the, you know, in the parking lot. <coughs> I remember one time we cut out the concrete for a storm, you know, for a gutter to go th under it. I had, to, I had to show people how to use a partner saw. Um, general maintenance, cleaning, I was there doing magazines, sound, do the prayers, I read the watchtower, read at the book study, conduct field service meetings, because, you know, sisters can't. So, so, you know, a lot of times I was the only brother, I had to do it. Or sometimes I wasn't even, and then I got to the point where I, you know, I wasn't even the only brother. You know, there'd be a ministerial or servant or an elder there, but they just didn't feel like doing the service, field service meeting. So like, hey, Rich, why don't you conduct a field service meeting today? So, never got, never kind of felt ministerial servant because, oddly enough, my dad wasn't about to have his son become a ministerial servant before him. So he cock-blocked me on that. Because at the time I was driving a POS car, shitty brakes. <clears throat> and I had, you know, new to driving too, because that his whole control issue, I didn't get, I didn't start driving until I was 19. He never actually really taught me how to drive. I had to kind of basically teach myself. So, he had a problem, you know, and so I had a, a little period of time where I had, you know, I don't know, four or five rear ending accidents where he just ran in the back of people. And he somehow decided to go tell this other brother who he was a new presiding overseer. And I knew he wasn't cool with me becoming a ministerial servant, but because all the other brothers, I guess, had uh, made the decision, he was going along with it. And his big issue was I was dating my wife at the time who had just been recently reinstated. And he just had, a, he, he can tell he had a problem with that. He, 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 basically told me one day, he pulled me aside. He was like, hey, I don't really approve this. I don't think you should be dating her. You know, be careful. You know, so, 
come to the meeting one day and I see my name up. It was right, it was the week before the circuit overseer coming. I see my name up. I was now the magazine servant. You know, I, was, I went from just, you know, being the guy back behind the magazines or another guy that, you know, had the charter and I was just there always. But I mean, now I now became a servant, the magazine servant. And I was like, oh, I think they're going to appoint me. And I was like, you know, it was a catch-22 situation because I was like, okay, I guess I got to get really into, you know, the main reason I never push to become a ministerial servant. I didn't like the idea of having to give all the talks. I'm, I don't I don't like talking in front of people. It's, it's just self-conscious. So I, I didn't want to be given talks every other meeting. It stressed me out. Uh, I, uh, number two or number four. I mean, I kind of was working on it at the time, subbing, because I was subbing, doing substitute talks and trying to, you know, whenever I could, I could get a couple. But, you know, so, so, so I tried to do some subs and try to get myself out of that, but and I really still wasn't ready for it. So I see it, and so I'm thinking, oh man, maybe Minister Oster, I guess I gotta start doing talks. Brother pulled me in the back room and says, um, well, we were seriously considering you as a ministerial servant, and um, well, your dad came in and he talked to us, and it seems you have an issue. Um, you're, you're, you have a problem with your driving. Your, I was just like, okay, yeah, so I have a problem, you know. Yeah, I feel stupid that I have a problem with that driving, but uh, I didn't really, I don't, I don't really see how that's, you know, a pro, how that's an issue. He's like, well, it's just not that, you know, we, we also want to make sure you and um, your, you know, I'm not saying your name, but you and your wife, you are, your, your girlfriend, your courtship goes all right. We want to make sure. And we want to make sure you're doing, I've noticed you've been studying your, because I, I actually, at this point, had gone through where I was just like, you know, I'm going to do everything the way I'm supposed to do. I'm going to study everything because that's, that's the thing. I was trying to improve myself in this organization. So I was like, okay, I need to hunger down. I need to start studying. So I started studying. Like, and I studied for everything. And that went on for about four or five months. And he's like, we noticed you've been watching, do, you know, studying your watchtower. We just, we just want to make sure. And then I, I was kind of like, I'll tell you right now, that just, I was just like, it's not that I was working to become a minister because I didn't really want it, but you know, I was like, I'm do, finally doing things the way I'm supposed to, I'm, I'm, you know, I've only been, you know, progressing. And then this asshole brother and my dad, that I know, my, my my dad loved this elder. It was like his favorite elder, I guess. You know, he he just I remember him making comments about his, you know, how cool his brother was. 